Hello and welcome to the Thursday, October 26, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, and a day late, uh, at least according to mine and others' expectation, we today got updates from Apple for pretty much anything ios ipad os mac os tv os and watch os for the big operating systems here mac os ios ipad os we actually got updates three versions back across the different operating systems i believe we got 53 vulnerabilities patched probably the one that's sort of the most interesting is cve 2023 32434 this is the already exploited vulnerability we have received patches for the more recent operating systems well uh, today we now got a patch for ios 15 that brings us up to ios 15.8 Eight and Apple states and has stated that before that it has seen exploitation of this vulnerability for iOS prior to 15.7. And this is also the only iOS 15 patch that was in today's update. The remainder of the vulnerabilities are sort of your usual mix, bunch of WebKit vulnerabilities that are always interesting that allow for code execution if you're visiting a malicious web page, some approach escalation vulnerabilities to go with this, and then also sort of a crop of uh, privacy issues, for example, where your MAC address may be sent when it's not supposed to be sent, or where, for example, hidden photo albums and such may be viewed without authentication. Certainly an update that you don't want to miss. I would suggest that at least sort of by the coming weekend, you probably should apply these updates across your different Apple devices. And beginning of October, Atlassian did release an update for CVE 2023-22515, patching a vulnerability in their Confluence server and data center uh, product. The problem here was an authentication bypass that pretty much allows anybody with a simple request uh, to add new admin users uh, to uh, your system. The exploit is trivial. It had already been exploited uh, back then, but uh, there was some sort of a little bit conflicting uh, advice as to how uh, the vulnerabilities exactly exploited. Initially, Atlassian only said that the setup administrator.action endpoint is going to be used for that. Later, uh, Rapid7 released a blog post showing that server-info.action could also be used. The reason this matters is that if you can't patch uh, right away, this is sort of the URLs that you may want to block like in a web application firewall and such. Well, uh, we now in the last couple of days saw some exploit attempts or at least scanning attempts for server-info. So uh, this endpoint is certainly being attacked now. And yes, you know, there are public uh, available exploits uh, for either endpoint out there. I did post sort of a little sample request. It's extremely trivial you know, how to exploit this. And um, that's, you know, definitely something that you need to pay attention to so if you're running still on-premise confluence server and data center then uh, make sure that you patch make sure you're not exposing it to the public internet no matter uh, what url is being accessed and VMware today released a critical patch for vCenter. This patch fixes CVE 2023-34048. It's an out-of-bounds write vulnerability in the DCE RPC protocol that can be used to achieve arbitrary code execution to a server that's exposed to the network. Well, again, one of these things you probably shouldn't expose to the internet, but people insist in doing so. 
VMware here even took the somewhat unusual step to provide patches for end of life versions of vCenter. So if you have one of those around, uh, take a look. Uh, you may actually have a patch available. CVSS score here is 9.8. And sorry for a hiccup with yesterday's podcast. Uh, you may have gotten a Tuesday podcast again. Have reworked uh, some of my podcast publishing scripts and, uh, well, not working quite as smooth yet as uh, the old one. Hopefully uh, this was the last bug. Uh, probably not. But uh, yes, thanks for everybody who uh, told me about it. It's always good to know that someone is listening. And probably the worst thing that could happen is if I make a mistake like this and nobody notices. It only should have happened with podcast apps if you downloaded the podcast fairly early after it was uh, published. But then again, some of these apps uh, continuously sort of check for new versions and uh, they may not have noticed later when I swapped the file back. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.